Hello, and welcome to Sim Radio here on the Sisters in Music Network. It's Monday Music Madness, and you're tuned into Mixing It with Nikki Chris. This is Nikki, and in case you don't know anything about me, I am a singer-songwriter from Raleigh, North Carolina. My show celebrates women in the music and entertainment industry, providing an avenue for them to showcase their talents. Our motto, Sisters in Music, Together We Are Stronger. I'm so excited to share today's guest with you. She is a Tony nominee producer for Jagged Little Pill on Broadway, a three-time Emmy nominee, a Remy Award-winning filmmaker, an award-winning actress, a 27-time ASCAP Plus Award-winning songwriter, an award-winning recording artist, an audio theater and audio book narrator, director, producer, who also produces off-Broadway and is a partner in London's West End. Not only that, she additionally works on projects with Broadway records, including having served as associate producer of the Grammy Award-nominated Broadway revival cast recording of My Fair Lady and creator, the book, lyrics, and music of the musical Session Girls. Currently, she is a producer of the upcoming documentary, The Manhattan Transfer Story. Please welcome the fabulously talented, wonderfully sweet, and my dear friend, Mia Morav. Mia, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm very fine. Thank you so much. I, I'm just thrilled to be here, Nikki. Thank you for having me. You are so welcome. I'm so excited to have you on. I know that this has been a while in the making, so I'm stoked that we're finally able to get you on the show. And I am in such awe of your talent. You are so phenomenal. And I really don't know where to start, but we're going to start with your Tony Award nominations and the 2021 Grammy Award for Best Musical Theater Album for Jagged Little Pill Broadway. Massive congrats. How do all of these awards and nominations make you feel? Well, you know, I've been advised so many times, Nikki, to not say how long it took. <laughs> because, But I, I wear it kind of as a badge of honor for not ever giving up on my dreams. And I know a lot of people say, never give up, never give up. But from the time that I first saw the Tony Award in Boston when I was house-sitting for a friend, I was 20 years old, and then when I was 40 years later, and yes, I'm going to say it, I'm a Tony nominee now as a producer on Broadway. The deities, the muses, and the gods brought me to Broadway as a producer, not a performer, but you know what? I will take it. So I am very, very honored to be in this place. I also want to thank my Broadway partner, Van Dean, for bringing me to Broadway. We met through the Grammys, actually, and my first show with him on Broadway was Anastasia, as you may remember, and so we've just had a lovely time progressing together, and he's been a wonderful mentor to me, and he's a dear, sweet spirit. Also, as far as Jagged Little Pill winning the Grammy, we are all so excited because in musical theater, the cast recording comes because of the show. So because the show exists, and so we kind of, you know, otherwise, if, if the show doesn't exist yet, it's called a concept recording or a new, a new work or something like that. But we all just go, hey, we got the Grammy, because, you know, we just did not know, you know, what was going to happen, and you never really know. You have an inkling or you have a hope, and, and then, you know, when it all works out, you feel really just so appreciative this year, I had another uh, show with which I'm involved is uh, The Prince of Egypt, which is in London's West End, and that was also nominated for a Grammy. So it was just a big old satchel of wonderful, and I'm just really, really happy for everybody. I'm so excited for you. It's, I didn't realize that you were also part of The Prince of Egypt, so Massive congrats on that, too. That's just so wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. New York City, the city that never sleeps, 2020. Very challenging for all of us. What's it been like creating in the pandemic? I know that you've been doing narrating, directing, producing. You have multiple audio works going on. 
Sarah Rose Kearns, Made Down, your own audio theater script, Bend. What's it been like? Well, we got here in New York right when it was the hot spot, the COVID hot spot in the nation. So many people had said to us, oh, my gosh, you're crazy. You know, what are you going to New York for? But as you may surmise from my previous um, <laughs> citation upon never giving up on, you know, wanting to do it, I, I, around that same time that I was house sitting in Boston, I also within, you know, the next two years was in New York. And um, I always vowed that I would, when I got back to New York, that I was going to do it without five roommates and eating sardines every night. <laughs> so uh, we have accomplished that. And so, and, you know, I spent 23 years in the D.C. area and I worked at a PBS member station and my film career started there. So I've had wonderful meanderings until I got back here. But I just knew that I would be very, very vigilant about sanitizing everything and just being extremely careful and nobody was socializing at the time so we weren't really afraid of that and we would just be in our apartment a lot which we were very happy to be in we we love it nice place here and we just were ready we were ready to face it to face it together chris and i and we just were extremely extremely careful as i say we went outside at first just to exercise and then we'd come back in and of course Chris had to go to work. He got a job here as well. So what I did was Maple Grove Studios and Mr. Anthony Hayes had commissioned me to do about anywhere from a dozen to 15 works of classic literature, audio works of classic literature. So that was commencing. Many Down had started for me in February of this year, and those audio works were going. We were also finishing up Peter Eisenstadter's Broadcast Muse Audio Theater, Modern Day Take on Greek Mythology series, the fifth of that. So there was plenty of work to do, and it actually gave me a chance to build a sound booth, thanks to Chris building it for me, and, you know, getting in the booth and getting a lot of these things done. That's fantastic, and I've been hearing a lot of individuals in similar circumstances, they're saying that they almost as much as the pandemic was challenging, they welcomed it and they have found a lot of positives out of it, such as yes, slowing down, being able to work on things that they weren't able to do previously, take a breath and get some things situated. So it sounds like you actually, even though it was challenging, had some significant positive things that, that came out of it. So that's really great. And I also know yes. that you did some virtual uh-huh. performances. So tell yes. us about <laughs> Barry Manuel. Yes, I want to hear about Barry Manilow's virtual choir. And then I also uh-huh. know you did an opera in Italian. Yes. So how did all of this unfold? Well, my music director, Michael J. Moritz Jr., um, had a virtual choir for a private event, and Barry Manilow needed a virtual choir to sing his song with him, a cappella, one voice. So Chris and I both were invited to do that, and we were absolutely thrilled. That was in July, and then I think a few months later, you know, toward the late fall, the Children's Diabetes Foundation had a 90th birthday party for their founder, And People TV carried that piece again. So that was really wonderful. We we just had such a lovely time doing it. And we had already done works with Raylan Moore Opera, uh, many works with Raylan Moore Opera. And so artistic director Ben Robinson invited us both to be in Pagliacci. And we had to learn Italian. And the first piece that the ensemble is in goes very, very fast. Chris had already recorded himself, and then when it came time to record me, I was trying to keep up with it. I had been listening and listening and listening, and then I guess I got a little... (laughs) A little flustered when when I you know when the mic is right in front of your face you know and normally I'm not like that don't be afraid to hire me folks but in this particular case it was just really really funny and I said okay let me hear that track back and I laughed so hard Nikki because Chris said to me Mia is 
not actually an Italian phrase because I was going so fast <laughs> trying to keep up with myself. And then, and then after that, I said, okay, let's do it a little a la carte, and I nailed it. And, and then we send the files off to Mr. Robinson, Ben, the wonderful Ben Robinson, and he writes back and says, you guys did a great job. And I was so relieved because I was just knowing what I kind of went through with that first piece to get through it. Was it, it, I look back on it now, and it's really hilarious. And we just had a wonderful time being in that ensemble as well. And then the next ensemble that will be in, which will very likely be outdoors, will be in Falstaff for a Raymond Moore opera, and that's in August, you know, provided that everything's 100% safe to do so. So we're very much looking forward oh, to wow. that as well. I did want to that tell you one like thing. Fun. that Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, we're looking forward to it. I did want to tell you this one thing that coming out of the pandemic after over a year, the first venture back into a big studio uh, was in the Film Arts building here in Manhattan. And it was John Kilgore recording and sound and John Kilgore himself, you know, was there for us. And that is where for the first half of the day on April 15th, I directed and produced Many Down, which features narrator Tony nominee Lily Cooper and Sarah Rose Kearns, the playwright, as Cassandra Austin and Laura Rocklin as Jane Austen. And then the table got turned on me because Gail Shallon of Storylight came in to direct me to do an Oscar Wilde piece called The Devoted Friend that had 11 different character voices in it. So April 15th was a oh big day goodness. of being... Yeah. <laughs> April 15th was a great way to get sort of back to normal, you know, going to a big studio to, to record as opposed to being in the booth at home. Yeah, that's great, Mia. It's awesome to hear that slowly at least things are opening up. And I know that they also recently announced, I think, that Broadway is starting to open up as well, too. So I'm looking yes. forward to <laughs> a lot of those yeah. shows coming back. Oh no, we just already started buying tickets, I was gonna say, and we've got all we've got our line up and everything. Jagged Little Pill will open again October twenty first. Uh company will start in previews on the December twentieth and open for for real <laughs> January ninth. It looks like Sing Street's going to go to twenty twenty two and the King's Speech will go to twenty twenty two and Marie about the dancer who inspired Degas will go to 2022 as well. So we just have this pipeline of things that are happening on Broadway, and we're just so excited and so relieved and grateful and humbled by the experience and just can't wait for audiences to be able to experience the shows again, any show, all of them. Yeah, so I'm actually a little bit bummed that you said that Jagged Little Pill isn't going to come back until October 21st because I'm going to be there the week before, and I actually was hoping that I would be able to grab that show. So I'll have to see what else is open then and see if I can. Well, I, I'll be it. happy to help you make choices. And the other thing I wanted to say is, you know what that means, Nikki? What? You're just going to have to come back. I just have to come back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Mikasa exactly, and Sukasa. Exactly. <laughs> Ah, uh, muy bien, gracias. Okay, let's talk about the musical Session Girls for a bit. You created okay. the book, the lyrics, the music. Yes. I know you brought a couple of songs from the musical. Tell us about yes. the show and then tee up if you want to make Bill on a show for us before we put that in for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Session Girls is about three women who live in the same apartment building, and they are involved in the music world here in Manhattan. Coco is the most sought-after backup singer that there is, but she has a little bit of an alcohol problem. Mariana is a classical musician. She's a cellist, and she's also engaged to another cellist named Ruel Finkel. She is the anchor of the three girls. There's problems that could brew there with a two-cellist household. Uh, I won't give too much away, of course. And then there's Jolie Nye, who is a music producer. She's an associate producer at the time, and she's working up to being a producer. 
And she is smitten with Terence Rand, whom she meets as her new boss because of a merger that happened with the studio that she worked with, with a big record company. So to bring you into, if you want to make dough in a show, Terence Rand sings that with his friend, Mitchy Karabakis, who comes to him all a flutter because his latest Broadway show was a flop. And those two fabulosos, Nikki, are Brian Charles Rooney and Robbie Roselle. Fabulous. I love this song. It is so upbeat. It is so catchy. So here is If You Want to Make Dough on a Show from the musical Session Girl. And out there, if you want to make dough on a show, I'll put a lid on put it. Put a kid in it. Put a kid in it. If you want to make dough on a show, put a kid in it. Put a kid in it. Casting Sally and Johnny and Meg and Lulu just ensures that the audience raves over you. If you want to make dough on a show, put a kid in it. Put a kid in it. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to make dough on a show, put a kid in it. Yes. Put a kid in it. If you want to make dough on a show. Put a kid in it, put a kid in it Just omit all the violence, detritus and sex And the critics will say, I can't wait for what's next If you want to make dough on a show Put a kid in it, put a kid in it Take heed, hey, come on, meet my secretary Refusing to marry and start a family My wife took her out and they saw make dough on a show put a kid in it put a kid in it if you want to make dough on a show put a kid in it put a kid in it all that crying and hollering scraped knees and bruises while you try to dictate the audience chooses if you want to make dough on a show put a kid Shows how can you doubt it? There's rock and roll beasties, the genies and sponges. The box office opens, the audience lunches. If you want to make dough on a show, put a kid in it, put a kid in it. If you want to make dough on a show, put a kid in it, put a kid in it. For a standing ovation that brings down the joints, I'll just rework the script better because I now. If you want to make dough on a show, put a kid in it, put a kid in it. If you want to make dough on a show, put a kid in it, put a kid in it. Ha! You recorded that live at Feinstein's, correct? Yes, um, Feinstein's 54 Below. And that was in March of 2018, <laughs> March okay. 6th, yeah. I guess, 2018. And I was really thrilled when Van Dean of Broadway Records asked me if he could carry it. I did not walk into that with us being Broadway partners. I did not walk into that with any presumption whatsoever. And when he came to me and said, I want to carry this on Broadway Records, oh, gosh, I just fell to my knees and said, it is yours. You may have it because I just, you know, would I would never have asked, uh, hey, do you want to, you know, I just did not go there. I was so thrilled to have such a lovely cast, all Broadway performers, some Tony nominated, and to have Michael Moritz and his musicians as, you know, the band and Feinstein's 54 Below is just so generous with all of their people, uh, Jen Tepper, Adrian Carnani, uh, KJ Hardy, just D- Dylan Bustamante, everybody was just so lovely. It was literally a dream come true. And, you know, I had written Session Girls and waited for it to have some sort of debut for 10 years. I just wanted it to be the right thing at the right time. And finally, it gelled. Finally, it gelled. I love it how things work out. So that actually is a great time for us to take a short break here from a word from one of our partners in podcasting. This is mother-daughter duo, Ruth and Amelia. 
We'll be right back on Mixing It with Nikki Chris here on Sim Radio. Hey, this is Ruth. And Amelia. And you're listening to Mixing It with Nikki Chris on the Sim Radio Network. Check out our new album, Cocoanda Bay, now on Spotify. Sisters in Music, together we are stronger. And we're back on Mixing It with Nikki Chris on the Sim Radio Network. And my fabulous, wonderful guest, the multi-talented Broadway producer, Mia Morav. So, Nikki, is it okay to just tell everybody how we first had our biggest discussion online when we very, very, very first met? Absolutely. Well, I had written to you and said that I was really enamored of your talent and everything and that you reminded me of Connie Stevens, and she was just so gorgeous and so talented and, and, and everything. And I just said, do you, um, do you mind if I tell you that? You remind me of a current day Connie Stevens, and I think you're just wonderful. And you wrote back and said, oh, my gosh, Mia, you're so sweet. I love her, too. Yes, I do totally recall that. And real quick, it's funny that you bring that up because I actually have other people, they told me similar that I, I remind them of her, which is a huge, huge compliment. So thank you very, very much. It's, it, it's, it, it is definitely a huge, a huge compliment. And I appreciate that. <laughs> Didn't I hear, before we move on, I just have to ask you, didn't I hear that somebody said to you that you should play her in the movie and whoever said it, I totally <laughs> agree with them. <laughs> yeah, somebody <laughs> did say that. They, they did. I, out of the blue, too, because it was really weird. It was at, way after you and I had had the conversation. And then a couple people had said some things off the cuff that, that I reminded them of her. And then somebody just came right out of the blue and said, oh, you so need to play her in, in like, a biography <laughs> if, if there's ever a buyer. You need, and I was like, I have no acting experience. Don't know how that's going to work, but, hey, I'd be hey, willing you're a to performer. A you know what to do. <laughs> Yes, yes. I'm a quick learner, quick learner. All right, I would like to get to another song from the musical Session Girls. I believe you also brought with you Painfully Self-Aware. Could you tell us what (laughs) that song is about before we put it on? Yes, this is when the audience is introduced. It's the opening number, and it's a tango. And this is when they're introduced to Jolie, Mariana, and Coco. And they're talking about their particular quibbles and quirks that they're enduring. And it's a great setup for the audience to understand what each of these ladies is living through at this specific moment in time. Perfect. So here is Painfully Self-Aware from the musical Session Girls. I painfully self-aware. I'm painfully self-aware 
love it. I wish I had gone and seen that. Oh, I'm so glad you enjoyed that, Nikki. Thank you so much. Those singers, those lovely singers, are Lauren Worsham as Jolie, Jill Abramovitz as Coco, and the incredible Ayoyo Joy as Mariana. We had a lovely night. It was a lovely, lovely night. It was one of those times where you think that you're, you're, you, you might, you know, be having heart palpitations all night, but it went off so swimmingly and everybody was so wonderful that I just got to sit there and watch it. And I was ever so grateful and really humbled. The whole cast was just really extraordinary. I wish I had been there. Wish I had been there. Next time. Next time I'll definitely be there. Next time. So obviously the last year and a half has been tough. I'd like to get back to some of the things that you've been doing because you are an extremely giving individual. So especially with the performing arts, I know everyone's looking forward to reopening, but you've been doing more helping giving as much as you possibly can. Can you tell us some of the things that you've been doing, some of the organizations that you've been supporting and where potentially others can help if they would like to, because knowing that it's going to take a while for things to reopen, so people still need help. I've been at this and with basic needs, roof overhead, food and tummies, uh, winter clothing, things like that. I also have as much as conceivably possible been, whenever I need anything, I've been trying to buy from uh, people who make what I need, as opposed to just going on, you know, doing online shopping with big entities, big corporations, and big vendors. I also have been supporting the Actors Fund predominantly, and also Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS, and um, other organizations that are helping with inclusion and diversity, and I have had a wonderful go of it. I did reach a point where I had to kind of stop for a little while and now I'm back on the upswing again to be able to help some more. That's just absolutely fantastic and massive kudos to you for being willing to help because not everybody is. And I do know quite a few artists, including yourself, that do give back and are extremely generous with with time and thought and monetary purposes and it's just absolutely wonderful so thank you for all that you do and I'm sure that everyone that you're helping is is extremely appreciated you're so kind Nikki much 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 appreciated I I try to do as much as I can and you know literally what we have learned and continue to learn is anything anybody can spare is not too small if all you can spare is a dollar send a dollar Send it to where you want and where you think it will help the most. We can't always help. We also have to put a roof over our own head and food in our own tummies. But anything you can give is never is never scorned or uh, mocked. It's so important right now. And when you can do it, do it. And if you need to take a break from it, take a break from it and then just go back in. Brilliant words to live by. So I'd like to switch gears real quick yeah. before we close out the show is I know that you've done some collaborating with and singing with and for other artists. There's a couple that I know as well. So Trevor Sewell, Tice Green, uh-huh. Gar Francis. You've done some work with Bungo Boy Records. What's it like yeah. collaborating and singing with, with other artists? Well, you know, I love doing backup vocals. <laughs> I, and that's what Trevor had me do for his hollow and calling Nashville albums. And, uh, in fact, for calling Nashville, we went to Nashville and courted it there at the Sound Emporium in Nashville. You can't beat that on Music Row. It was a wonderful experience. And for Tice to bring me in to sing on one of his songs, Objects in the Rearview Mirror May Appear Closer Than They Are, in parentheses, um, for, for an epic Jim Steinman album was just to die for. I had the best time on that. And Bongo Boy has brought me in to sing Spy for Love and Work Be Baby, which I also did with the Trevor Sewell Band for Gar Francis, his original tunes. And on those, I actually sang lead and and back up on those. I feel really lucky to have been invited. I'm very thrilled to say that Gotham Records in the UK has carried my own Shakespeare works, my, my Celtic EP, and uh, including the one that was the breakout hit on that, which was Shakespeare and Me. And I just feel really, really lucky. I'm always honored if anybody wants me to be 
on their album at all. Yes, and you brought Shakespeare and Me with you, and I wanted to talk about that a little bit. Yeah. EP is is called Denoon. Is Denoon. that how you pronounce it? Yes. Yep, that is the Perfect. that is the the little town in Scotland where I was raised. It's across the fast of Clyde from Glasgow. <laughs> and that wow. that inspired that inspired me to name it and to keep the E P Celtic. And Shakespeare me is based on Shakespeare's son at I believe one forty seven. It starts out My Love is as a fever, you know, and then it ends the way the song ends and it inspired me to make it a happy jaunt, but then <laughs> then then well, we'll play this for everyone so that they can understand what the then is. So here is Shakespeare and Me from the EP Denoon. I fear mine heart doth give away The thoughts awakened in my soul I cannot hide myself behind Pretentious deeds once thought divine A demigod has come to capture me A writing off with him I go His face a work of art to me His eyes the mirror of his soul But thou hast won him fair And thought him bright Through all his blackness head As dark as night But thou hast won him fair And thought him Protect me, oh kind beam of truth On wings of passion he'd have made me glide I know what haunted me inside Oh thrill, the beauty of true love Sent from arrows on a dove But thou hast won him fair And thought him bright Through all his black as hell As dark as night But thou hast won him fair And thought him from individuals. This is great. So before we sign off, is there anything yeah. else that you would like to share with our listeners? Do you have a website that they can follow you on? Any social media sites that you would like to share with everyone? Oh, thank you. Yes, I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Mia Moravis. M-I-A-M-O-R-A-V as in Victor, I-S as in Sam. And I'm on Facebook as Mia Moravis. I think it's Facebook.com's forward slash Mia.Moravis. I'm also on LinkedIn. 
And I have a website that I use predominantly just for voiceover auditions. <laughs> and I'm Mia underscore Moravis at Yahoo.com if you'd like to send a note. Thank you, thank you so much for having me today. I, I truly feel humbled and grateful and so lucky. And if it's okay to say, I just want to congratulate you on your award nominations. Oh, my gosh, you're so inspiring. And I just can't wait to see what happens and what you do next. Thank you so much, Mia. It's been a lovely pleasure, and I can't wait to see you soon so that I can give you a big hug. Can't wait to hug you. <laughs> All right, everyone. I would love to thank my wonderful guest and fabulous friend, Mia Morales for taking the time to chat with me today. On behalf of Sim Radio, this is Nikki Chris. Until next time, keep on mixing it. Mixing it.